Hey YouTube, welcome back to the shop. I'm Rich. Um, today is the final installment of my DRO install. So I was able to uh, <clears throat> get the x-axis scale mounted up. It's pretty simple. Um, just screwed it to the back of the table, took my little angle plate, bolted it to the cross slide, and uh, that was it. That couldn't have been really any simpler. And then I, had, I went ahead and uh, well, I didn't fabricate a mount per se. I actually went rooting through my pile of uh, aluminum material and actually found this handy-dandy little bracket that came off of something somewhere along the line that I picked up. Um, it's got a nice little shelf here that I can put my, uh, my wrenches and everything in there. Um, it's articulated so I can swing it in this direction. It actually swivels side to side. It swivels around. And then and it's, there's a little half-inch post here, so I just drilled the block with a set screw, screwed it to the back of my plate for mounting my tablet, and uh, that's good to be good to go. The only thing really left to do is to uh, calibrate it and to just um, work on running the wires and, and cleaning those up. I'm going to hold off on that because um, I'm planning to put a tachometer on here. I'm very happy with the results of the DRO, and I think adding a tack would be a really useful feature. Um, I went ahead and ordered the... Uh, Hall effect sensor hardware for that, and I got to figure out where to mount the magnets somewhere on the spindle, and that's going to be that. Let me bring it around the front, and I'll show you the calibration process and some of the features of the DRO. So, once the DRO is installed and mounted, uh, it needs to be calibrated, and uh, the way to calibrate it is to go ahead and uh, set up some one, two, three blocks so you have a known distance to travel that's fairly accurate. Um, and I check these blocks with all the measuring tools I have, and they look like they're pretty good. So I've got the one, two, three block here. I have an indicator set up on zero so I can indicate my travel. And then you just go to the DRO software, and you go into settings. And what you want to do is you want to go ahead and uh, display down to tenths. Whoop. And then you want to go in and you want to set, and it gets a little, it gets a little uh a little jittery when you go to tens because obviously these scales, you know, are, are sending data points and it's <laughs> it's super super sensitive. Um, and then you want to go in. And then you want to go into the settings, and you want to set the uh, counts per inch at thirty thousand. And I've gone ahead and done that, so I'm set at thirty thousand counts per inch. Go ahead and let it reconnect. I notice when you're changing the settings here, it kind of loses this connection. And then we'll zero everything. And then we're at zero here. So now I'm going to go ahead and move uh, exactly three inches. So I'm going to take my one, two, three block out, bring the table over. And then I'm just going to come until I read zero in the indicator. zero. So that's telling me that we counted 2,558 ticks if it were, ten, or I'm sorry, 0.2558 if we were 10,000 ticks per inch. So now I can just go ahead and use this as my um, calibration number because we moved three inches and I told it it was 30,000, right? So now I can go in here, go to my settings, come down to the X, counts per inch, 2558. Say OK. Go back. Zero. And now I'm going to come back my three inches. Actually, let me, uh, let me go back to three counts per inch, or three digits rather. Repeat that just to verify that everything where it used to be. Back again. Come zero in the indicator. And now 
we'll just go ahead and come back my three. And you know, the idea is to repeat this process a couple times to make sure that you got it dialed in as accurately as you can. Being I'm off a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and repeat that process until I'm happy with the number. So I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, and then I'll come back and show you some of the features of the DRO. Okay, so we're in through the calibration. So I'm at, uh, looks like the, the counts per inch on these scales are 2,560 counts per inch. I did notice, um, I, I did this yesterday afternoon and, uh, and ran through it a couple times, and I was within a half a thou over three inches almost every time. And this morning, I'm actually getting quite a bit more variation than that. I'm getting, I'm getting two or three thou. And I think that might be down to the temperature difference. So it's fairly cool in the shop this morning right now. It's about uh, oh, 55 degrees. And yesterday afternoon, it was probably closer to 75. So that may account for some of the difference. I'm also going to go through and clean the scales a little bit and just make sure that everything is, uh, is all good. But, you know, a thou or two, I'm pretty happy with. Um, the repeatability seems really good when I when I come back and forth on the three inch uh, travel. I'm getting the same reading on the DRO that I'm you know every time. <clears throat> so I'm saying it's it's reading three uh, three inches and two thou, and when I zero out the indicator, and this is a half thou indicator. So that's pretty nice. I'm I'm, I'm totally thrilled with that. So let me go ahead and uh, show you some of the things you can do with this software. Pretty groovy. Get the indicator out of the way. So if I have a part, you know, on the on the on the uh, in the machine, and I want to find the center of it, I can just zero the zero that I can select the axis, and then I can go ahead and unlock the uh, table here. Being helpful, right? Take an edge finder, find the edge. What have I done here? I chose the wrong axis. <laughs> so I'll zero that. Find one edge, hit zero, hit the edge finder, find the back edge, hit half, and then drive to zero. And that's going to find me the center of my part. So certainly a lot quicker than trying to measure and lay stuff out. Right? So that's going to get me to the center. Nice and quick and easy. Uh, to do a bolt circle, bolt circles are great on this. So we'll go ahead and choose bolt circle. I'm going to do a radius of one inch. I'm going to do five holes. You can actually drill a partial circle and you can drill it offset to the, to the center axis of the machine. I'm just going to go ahead and do a, a full circle. And then if I go to my workspace here, whoop, and I say preview, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Maybe zoom in a little bit. So now my bolt circle is laid right out on here. And then all I got to do is drive to my point. And I'm laid out. Drill my hole. Come down. Drive to my next point. to zero, drill my next hole. So super easy, super fast. Um, just a great feature, I think. So anyway, that's the DRO. When I, I went ahead and, uh, and moved my speed controller to the other side of the machine. It's actually more convenient that way because, um, you know, if I'm drilling a hole or something, or, 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 or more important, you know, if I'm tapping, right, I can go ahead and I can just bump the machine, slow it down and then do it that way. Before, I was kind of reach over here, and it was really annoying. So anyway, uh, that's the conclusion of the DRO. So the next thing to do is, I've, like I said, I've ordered some, uh, some electronics to go ahead and set up a Hall effect sensor on the uh, spindle here. I'm not quite sure where I'm going to mount the magnets. There's this nice big uh, retaining ring that lives on top of the pulley. I'll probably go ahead and just use that. And uh, it's got a... It's got, it's got two 
cap screws holding it in place. So I think I'll probably take it off and, and drill for, uh, I don't know, three or four magnets around here. Mount the uh, Hall effect sensor under the top of the cover. And uh, that'll be that. So I'll probably do a quick video on that once I get the hardware and everything. Um, I'll watch you one thing before I, uh, before I conclude. Let me just real quickly show you the hardware, the electronics rather. Uh, I can't reach it. Let me just go ahead and... Sorry about that. So all you electronics guys, I would recommend averting your eyes because this is kind of a big mess in here. So that's the controller, um, TI launch pad, three USB headers, and a Bluetooth uh, serial modem. My wiring is kind of a big snarl. My, uh, my soldering didn't go so well in some of these places, so I ended up having to go back and, and re-solder and uh, splice the wires. But in any event, it does work. It seems to be reliable. Um, having the, I was a little concerned having the Bluetooth modem inside the metal box, but it works just fine. So anyway, that's it for the DRO project. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, hope you guys watched me stumble, enjoyed watching me stumble through, and uh, look forward to having you guys back. Thanks for watching.